is back in Beyond Thunderdome. Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 1985 Mad Max sequel, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. The film is co-directed this time by George Miller and George Ogilvie, and it stars, of course, Mel Gibson. We have Tina Turner as Ante, and Bruce Spence returns as Jedediah. Right, okay, this is supposedly set 15 years after Mad Max 2 um, and we meet Max at the beginning of this film um, he is um, walking his caravan and he is ambushed by Bruce Spencer's character Jedediah who has a little plane flies it around sees targets and then kind of steals from them so he steals his caravan um, takes it to um, Barter Town, which is a ruthless um, town that is run by Tina Turner's Ante, uh, and it's a place where people can go and barter for goods. Um, and Max goes there to try and find his goods and makes a deal with Ante in order to get everything back. She basically says to him, I want you to kill someone, and that someone is Master Blaster. Um, who is a guy that runs underneath Barter Town and it is all run by pigs and methane that's what I have where they get the power from um, and she wants Blaster got rid of which is the huge body and she wants to keep Master which is a little uh, a little chappy who's got all the brains Max agrees, they have a fight in Thunderdome it doesn't go according to plan and then Max uh, is banished out into the desert where he survives and is saved by a bunch of um, lost children, a lost tribe of children that take Max under their wing um, as they believe him to be somebody that has been prophesied to them. Right, what are my thoughts on Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome? Well, if you speak to most people, um, you know, What's your favourite Mad Max film? There's very, very few people will say Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. If you ask people to list what their favourite Mad Max films are, this usually ends up on the, air, at the at, right at the end of most people's lists. And I think that's a shame, if I'm being particularly honest, because I think this film, in a lot of ways, is quite misunderstood. Um, I've always been quite a big fan of this film, and I've always had a bit of a soft spot for this film because as I mentioned briefly in my previous review for Mad Max 2 this was my first experience of Mad Max I went to the cinema to see this um, with my dad I'm sure my dad and my brother and sister went as well um, so this was my first introduction to his character of Mad Max um, and I really enjoyed the film I remember quite clearly enjoying this at the cinema um, and then probably a few years after that I saw Mad Max 2 and then the original Mad Max and I was a bit like oh they, they seem a bit certainly the first one I was a bit like what is this and the second one it was you know it just it didn't feel like the same film and there's there's a lot of reasons for that obviously this Mad Max 3 was you know funded by the US which is why Tina Turner's in it so it had quite a big budget budget thrown at it it was glossy, it was shiny, it had qu promoted quite a lot. You had Tina Turner doing the soundtrack, you know, so, you know, it, it definitely looks and feels different to the other two. Um, it's, as I said, it's glossier and shinier. So it's quite a shock to the system for anybody that has, you know, watched this one first and then you have to watch the first and the second one. It's a bit, you, they don't feel the same at all. And it's only much later when I've kind of like really understood um, the importance um, of the first two Mad Max films, especially the second one, and how incredible that film is. Um, but I, I'm not going to deny the fact that I do enjoy this film. Um, and I think the reason why a lot of people have a problem with this film is, I think, and, and I do get where they're coming from, and I do kind of agree, 
I think this film is excellent right up to the point where he meets the lost tribe of children and then it loses its way massively for a little bit uh, it gets quite dull in actual fact and then once he refines barter town it picks up again um, and there's again there's a reason for that because this film originally was not written as a Mad Max film it was written as like a Lord of the Flies type film um, where this, there's this lost tribe of children and somebody this this person finds them and they see him as their messiah um, and it was George Miller that suggested well maybe this person that finds them is Mad Max and that's when it became a Mad Max film so that's why I think it, it, at times it doesn't feel like a Mad Max film it feels like um, it was something else and that's because it absolutely was something else um, another thing as well that it, it's co-directors this time um, so you've not only got George Miller you've got the other director as well and I always pronounce his name I'll try again George uh, Ogilvie I'm sure I've got that wrong and apologies if I have um, so it, it feels disjointed at times and it, feel, it feels tonally a little bit different it was reported heavily that um, George Miller directed all the action scenes and the other director directed all the talky stuff and the drama stuff that's kind of been debunked since but when you watch the film it does actually make sense and you can actually watch there is a documentary on YouTube um, and you do see um, examples of this in this documentary you know the the other director George Ogilvie um, like talking to the kids and stuff and directing them and all this kind of stuff and George Miller more seems more prominent when they're doing like the stunt work and stuff so um, who knows um, it, it, there are, as I've said it's been reported that that's what it that's what they did but it's also been debunked at the same time but um, it does feel a little bit unbalanced when you watch it this there are some excellent moments in this film obviously um, as I've said the first part of this film where he finds Barter Town is, 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 is almost flawless it's a lot of fun especially the Thunderdome sequence um, and the ending as well I think the ending really needed you know something a little bit more impactful than what we got in regards to the chase I mean you were never going to get anything as good as an impressive as Mad Max 2 in regards to you know the chase and you know the car stunts and stuff I mean they do the best here and there is some impressive stunt work going on there's no getting around it there really is but you also can't get away from the fact that they're on a train you know being chased by Auntie and the rest of her gang sort of thing um, and it, it kind of limits the excitement um, but there are still some fun moments in that end chase sequence sort of thing and there is still some impressive stunts um, and it's I think a, a pretty good ending I remember being on a bit of a downer when I watched the ending in the cinema for the first time but it, it's in par, on par with the endings that we've seen in all the Mad Maxes you know what I mean the fact that he's a, he's a loner he's on his own you know he kind of always does the right thing and the theme of this film is that he finds his humanity in this one um, and I, I, and it, it's a shame as well because um, as it's also as well heavily reported that there was um, a scene cut out of this film where Max has a nightmare about um, the death of his wife and son from the first Mad Max and he wakes up crying realising that he has kind of is no better than the biker gang that killed his family um, so which kind of leads him to kind of refind his humanity in this film sort of thing and it's a shame I would have loved that scene to have stayed in the film I think it would have given it you know some real um, resonance in the film I, th I think it would have worked really really well but I'm guessing at the time you know you know the people involved were kind of like no we don't want touchy feely stuff in this film we just want people you know getting shot and blown up and all that kind of stuff so like I said I've, I've got a real affection for this one um, I think it's um, a really good Mad Max sequel um, I'm, I can understand why people don't like this one but like I say I, I, I've got a real soft spot for this one and I, I, I would hesitate personally 
to um, rank the Mad Max films because I'd probably get in trouble if I did because I won't put this last I actually you know really do quite like this one so yeah um, coming up next will be Mad Max Fury Road I haven't watched that for a good few years as well I'm looking forward to revisiting that um, seeing how Tom Hardy once again measures up to Mel Gibson um, I remember at the time loving the film but not being sure about Tom Hardy as Mad Max and after watching Mel Gibson knock it out of the park for three movies um, I'm a little bit worried that Tom Hardy is just not going to measure up after watching after not watching the film for a while but we shall see anyway so thanks for joining me guys I hope you enjoyed joining me for the first three Mad Max reviews um, I will of course be back with loads more reviews and content on the channel very very soon